Week 13 Giants reaction. The Giants have won three out of their last four. Now that sounds good and all, but unfortunately they waited till like week 13 to do it. So now we sit at four and eight. The playoffs, the playoff hopes look dead. Not gonna lie. Um, the loss to Philly really killed us last week, and it's you know rooting for the Giants is very frustrating at this point because when you want them to win, they lose. When you want them to lose, they win. I mean that's at least how I feel so far this season. But you can never complain about a victory. I mean, it's nice to have these young guys like Barkley and uh, Shermer as a you know head coach with his first stint as a Giant head coach, uh, experiencing experiencing some wins. Um, you know, we know how bad things got last year with McAdoo and uh, Spagnuolo at the same time, and you know to have a team experience wins is is always a positive. So you know you can't always be asking the tank because you know the players aren't going to tank they're still going to give their best effort they still have to feed their families and you know they expect contracts in the future so um you know i was pretty happy that they won once it was over but of course coming into it i was like hey i wouldn't be mad if they lost today but that's not how it ended so there's a lot to go over today um someone in my last video pointed out that i should put more like highlights and stuff in these videos and i completely agree with that it's just me being lazy i mean i do these um recordings on sunday night Usually I have a bunch of homework to do and, and stuff like that. I'm up like mad late doing it, but um, this time I have a lot of clips and hopefully you guys will like it more, so let me know if you enjoy that. And um, as always, we'll get into the positives first. So usually when I do this, I have a lot more negatives than positives, but I think it's pretty even today, so that's always encouraging. Uh, first, I want to say Janoris Jenkins had a terrific game, had so many pass deflections, had the game-winning deflection at the end. Uh, he did a lot of good things today, so I was really happy with his performance. Kerry Wynn had another good performance. I mean, he's been that guy that, like, you know, has low-key had a nice year for this team. He, um, you know, he's not one of those guys you expected coming in to be a, a big impact player. We were hoping that Vernon was going to be that guy, but never really uh, panned out that way, at least yet. Um, B.J. Hill had uh, two big sacks in this game, had one at the end of the first half, had another one in the third quarter. They were in big situations, so you love seeing that stuff from a young player like B.J. Hill. Unfortunately, Lorenzo Carter was out today, so we didn't get to see him improve as well, but B.J. Hill um, improving. I mean, this guy has a lot of talent, and, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of what Gentleman did in the draft. I didn't really think we needed another defensive lineman. I, I wish we got a right tackle in the draft, but B.J. Hill looks like he's going to be a good player in the future. How good, I don't know, but at least we're seeing the um, you know positive strides so far. Same thing with Dalvin Tomlinson. I think I mentioned him later, but he, he looked like he had a bounce back week this week as well after a rough week in Philadelphia. Saquon Barkley continues to impress the hell out of me every week. He gets better and better. I mean, whatever flaws he had in the beginning of the year, um, you know, some people were saying he was trying to turn um, every run into a big play, and that was kind of the one knock on him coming out of college that he wasn't picking up like the tough yards, but now you're seeing it. I mean, he's bouncing out when it's necessary, of course, but for the most part, he has looked terrific this season, probably the rookie of the year by far. Um, specifically, that third and 23 play, um, they ran that after back-to-back -back sacks, I believe. Uh, I don't know what quarter it was. It might have been the second quarter right before halftime, and I think he picked up 20 yards out of the 23 they needed. Um, that ultimately led to a field goal at the end of the half, and I thought they did a great job, you know, executing at the end of the first half. I mean, you know, a lot of people have criticized Pat Shermer and his timeout usage and some of his play calling towards the end of halves and, and at the end of games and stuff like that, but I thought the way they executed at the end of the half was terrific. I mean, they had a um, an out route to somebody, I forget who it was now, I think it was maybe a tight end, and then Rosas came in and knocked down a 57-yard field goal, and Rosas has been, you know, a terrific this year. I mean, he's only missed one field goal. I say this every week now. Um, the one he missed was because he was injured, and, you know, that guy deserves to be in the Pro Bowl. I mean, there's not a lot of Pro Bowlers on this Giants roster, but one guy that definitely deserves it is Aldrich Rosas for sure. Um, so I think, I think definitely you saw a stride from Pat Shermer as well. So last week the Giants basically, I don't want to say they lost because of this, but a big reason they lost was because they weren't using Saquon Barkley much in the third quarter, um, especially in the beginning of the third quarter. And this time, Barkley came out dominating right out of the gates in the third quarter. So he wasn't having a, a great rushing day in the first half. I mean, he did have that one run I was talking about, but after that he came out, had two really nice runs in the third quarter, the, uh, the Giants definitely established themselves as like that running team once again coming out um, coming out of halftime, and um, you like to see that. So I mean, when you have a guy that you pick second overall, 
that's as talented as this guy is. And I mean, people want to say, and I saw this, of course, that like you don't want to run him into the ground and stuff like that. But Barkley's like 21, 22 years old. I mean, he should be able to absorb this much contact and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm not saying you have to play him 100% of the time, but in big plays when, you know, you're um, in your own territory and backed up toward your own end zone, I mean, you kind of need to get out of that. And I mean, it's a, it's a whole field position battle stuff like that so you want to get a guy like Barkley who can get the tough yards and is by far your best running back on the team I mean I, I do like Wayne Goldman but he is by far the best on this team um so I said before I mean Dalvin Tomlinson bounce back week for sure I love Pat Shermer's play um trick plays I mean these are, these have been amazing I mean of course I think of the two um Odell throws and those have been amazing and you know, um, you should be running at least one trick play per game. I mean, I'm not saying you should do trick plays the whole game, but um, when you do trick plays and they work, it is a thing of beauty, and it seems like the Giants have ran them pretty well this year. Of course, they've had ones that haven't worked out, but when they work, they have looked amazing, and um, you love seeing that. I mean, because those are things we haven't really seen much with um, – with Ben McAdoo, I mean, if if they were if they ran like an end around or something with McAdoo, you'd be like shocked because like they never do that. The, they just ran the same simple plays over and over again. So to see a guy with you know a good offensive mind doing his thing is is really awesome to see. Um, I really liked Shermer's um, play call on the goal line touchdown to Odell. It was a fourth down and maybe one uh, yard and a half or something like that. And he basically got Odell on a drag route, got him on the left side of the field wide open. Eli made a really nice throw. I do criticize Eli a lot, but he he hung in there, kind of just lobbed it up in the area, and Odell came down with it pretty easily. But I like that play call a lot. Got um got Odell on one side of the field with no one else there. Um, Saquon Barkley's hurdle was insane. I should have mentioned this before, but the guy. I mean, Barkley's like. You know, he, he must have jumped like five feet in the air. I mean, he literally basically cleared the guy. I don't, I forget who the linebacker was, but his, his ass was on top of his head. And he, he wasn't even touching him. I mean, it was insane. Um, you know, the, the athleticism that guy has is just is crazy. And I'm happy he's a giant. You know, I mean, if you guys have followed everything I've done since I've been doing commentaries, I, of course, was against the Barkley pick because... I wanted a quarterback, and I still stand by that, but I'm not going to go back to that now, of course. But, you know, having Barkley is, is just, um, it's really nice. I mean, you know, running backs are luxuries in this league. You don't, you know, need them to win, but, you know, they, they still, um, they're really nice to have. You know, a guy like Barkley can, can do a lot for a team. I still think you win in the trenches in this league and, and win with a quarterback, but, you know, having good running backs, can't complain about that. Um, Sterling Shepard had some big first downs. I mean, if you look at his stats, I don't think he had that big of a game, maybe four or five catches for like 30, 40 yards. But um, he did have some big third down conversions, so definitely appreciate that. Riley Dixon had that awesome punt that was recovered by... Um, who was it, by uh, Shepard at first, and then it was Hamilton, then it was Diasi who recovered it on, like, the one-yard line. I mean, it was, like, a whole relay of, like, tossing the ball out of the end zone. It was just awesome. They got that ball down to, like, the one- or two-yard line. You really can't execute a punt any better than that. And I like to see Zach Diasi do something good because he's been on this team forever, I feel like. I mean, I literally think he was around when the Giants beat the Patriots in 07. So um, I like seeing that guy do well. But, yeah, there were a lot of positives this week. I mean, I'm probably missing some. Um, the offensive line I really didn't touch on yet. I mean, they there were some – actually, I'll get into that in the negatives. But for the most part, they weren't that bad. I mean, I definitely thought this could have been like a – a really bad game for this offensive line against this um amazing defense for the for the uh for the Bears. So I mean I think they definitely held their own and you know, gotta uh, give them a hats off for that. But um they could have done better of course. There's some things I gotta go over. So that will be it for the positives. So the negatives. All right. So first, the Giants had no answer for Tariq Cohen. Now. I mean, I remember watching Tariq Cohen in his first game, and as I always say, I'm not a big college football guy. I had no I had no idea who Tariq Cohen was, but I watched him in that first game. I think they played Atlanta or something, like um, two years ago, week one. And this guy was incredible. I mean, he was making these insane cuts, and this little, like, dude, he was like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, whatever he is, might even be shorter than that. And he was just so damn elusive. I made, made sure I picked him up in fantasy that year, all that kind of stuff. Tariq Cohen's one hell of a player, but the Giants had no answer for him at all. I mean, I don't have the stats right now on top of my head, but... He was dominating them on the uh, through the air, especially had some really big catches. He was just running like simple wheel routes, and like no one can guard him. Um, it was crazy. So 
Um, you know, they, they got to do a better job of covering these running backs and in the tight end position. It really wasn't an issue today because the Bears really don't have any great tight ends. Trey Burton's pretty good, but, you know, the rest of them, that, that guy who I never heard of at tight end caught a touchdown for them, but that was like a one yard or so. I'm looking on him for that. Another negative is giving up 27 points to Chase Daniel. So Chase Daniel, I think this was like his third career start. He's been in the NFL for like eight or nine years now. You definitely don't want to give up 27 points to a guy like that. And then Giants defense, I mean, it doesn't have many names on it. It's not very talented. I mean, I still like James Betcher. I can't really get on him much for the players that he's dealing with. And, you know, there are players that he has that just completely ruin everything. And here's a name right here, Curtis Riley. I mean, did you guys see the interception he dropped? I mean, I think most of us watching this video right now could have caught that ball. I understand it was raining out and stuff like that, and the uh, the sticky gloves don't work as well in the rain, but, like, you got to catch that. Come on. I mean, you're, you're in the NFL. Um, there was another player who made some, some stupid mistakes. I'll get into that later. Uh, Eli made some really bad throws. There was the Kyle Fuller interception that he just read, and there were some other near interceptions. And, you know, it wouldn't be a giant commentary for me without getting on Eli Manning, so <laughs> I had to do it. Um, no, but he, he played all right today. I can't really get on him too much. I think he did uh, enough to win. He did make some big throws when he had to, so I won't roast him too badly. Um, oh, there's another Eli note. So Eli had some bad footwork at times. I definitely have a video example when I was rewatching this game, and I was like, what the hell is this guy doing with his feet? I mean, there were times he was just using his arm. And, I mean, Eli is a much better quarterback, and I think anyone's a much better quarterback when you're stepping in the throws. Um, you know, we saw Patrick Mahomes do this in that, like, uh, the big shootout game with the Rams where he just, like, threw flat-footed and threw an interception to, like, a defensive lineman. Um, you know, quarterbacks who don't step into their throws definitely tend to make bad decisions and, and bad throws. So, um, Eli had some of those today. Here's one. Mario Edwards had some dumb penalties. He had a hand to the face penalty and I think an unnecessary roughness penalty. I'm pretty sure those are 30 yard penalties when you um, add them up. So stuff like that. I mean, like Edwards and Curtis Riley were just awful. You know what I mean? They really didn't do much positive today. They were kind of just hurting us with the penalty yards and the dropped interceptions and Curtis Riley missing tackles and all that kind of crap. So you hate seeing that. Olivier Vernon was not containing the edge on the running plays. There was a big fourth and one I remember. I think Tariq Cohen was the running back. And instead of stealing the edge, um, Vernon basically was just swallowed up by the left tackle and um, allowed Tariq Cohen to get to the edge and pick up a, a good amount of yards. There was another example as well. I, I think it was Jordan Howard on the second run. Um, let's see, where are we? Chad Wheeler and Jamon Brown couldn't pick up a stunt on Leonard Floyd. I forget what quarter this happened in. I'll put the video in it. But, you know, stuff like that, I mean, it was just simple. I mean, I said the offensive line had a pretty decent day today, but, like, simple stuff like that. And I understand Jamon Brown's only been here for, like, three or four weeks now, but you got to pick up simple stuff like that. But I actually kind of low-key like the fact that Leonard Floyd got a sack when the Giants were rumored to draft him in the same draft that took um, Eli Apple. But Jerry Reese couldn't keep his mouth shut, so I'm sure some of you guys know that story. But kind of funny that Leonard Floyd got a, a sack against the Giants. Um, Landon Collins, I mean, I, I like Landon as a player, and I've said this before, but he definitely needs to improve on his coverage skills. There were plenty of times where he was matched up with Tariq Cohen, and as I said, I praised Cohen. He's a great player, but they he just couldn't cover him. I mean, there was a play where... Um, what was it? It was down the left sideline. It was Collins versus Cohen, and it was basically like a jump ball in a way. Um, you know, Chase Daniels not the best quarterback. Collins definitely saw that ball in time, and he let the five six five seven Cohen catch that ball over him. I mean, you can't have that if you're Landon Collins. I mean, his ball skills aren't that great in the air, but you know, when it comes to stopping the run and making tackles, I said Landon's one of the best in the game. But when it comes to coverage skills, needs to get a lot better. He's still only like 23, 24 years old, so I'm not going to stress over it too much. We're obviously not going to make the playoffs this year, but I hope he can fix that and become like a complete safety because he has a world of talent but he needs to improve on that one aspect to comp uh, to be one of the best safeties in the league um so eli another eli comment eli can't take that sack on the bears that we're on the bears 30 yard line up seven in the fourth quarter late in the fourth quarter and eli takes a sack from i think khalil mack it was 
You as the quarterback, I don't care how you know non-mobile you are, you cannot take a sack in that situation. If you feel any sort of pressure, you need to throw that ball near the sideline, near one of your receivers. Well, not near the sideline. You need to throw it out of bounds near one of your receivers. I mean, come on. You can't do that. Took them out of field goal range, and it's kind of one of the reasons the Bears were able to come back in this game. Um, and it kind of reminded me, I mean, Eli Manning does these stupid things. We know this. I mean, we've watched Eli Manning for so many years now. There was a game, I think it was opening night in Dallas. I think it was 2014, 2015. I think it was 2015. And the Giants basically had the ball with like a minute left. They needed to just waste the clock. And Tom Coughlin decided to go for a pass play. And rather than Eli Manning just like taking a knee and then taking the sack, that could have ran the clock down to like 20 seconds. But Eli Manning threw the ball out of bounds in the back of the end zone, gave Dallas enough time to come back and score, and ultimately win the game. I think it was the time when Romo threw that game winner to Witten with like two seconds left in the game or something like that. I was heartbroken, so I'm sure some of you remember that as well. I'll try to find the video and put it in here for you guys. Um, you can't blow a game up 10 at home, especially against Chase Daniel with under two minutes left. A lot of it came down to the onside kick, and of course, Curtis Riley missed a block on the onside kick. Odell kind of took a nonchalant route to it, but, you know, Odell answered the questions in, in the post game and said, like, don't question my heart and stuff like that. And I'm not going to blame Odell for that, but, I mean, you have to at least make somewhat of an effort to get that onside kick. It kind of looked like he was waiting for it to bounce again. Maybe he didn't expect the Bears to recover it that fast, but... There's no excuses. It was a good onside kick, not going to lie, but you need to recover those. You know, that's what winning football teams do, and that's part of the reason we made it to overtime. And it's not like there was one issue of why we got to overtime. It was just um, there was a bunch of things that we did wrong. So that was just one of them. Um, the Shepard non-catch, I mean, this one I was arguing with someone on Twitter about. Whose fault do you think it was on the Sterling Shepard um, drop or overthrow in the end zone in overtime? I'm going to put the video in here. I'm in the belief that, like, I think like 75% of it is Eli's fault. Now, I think what he should have done is he could have thrown it further. I think that ball was placed too far inside. Shepard obviously had to dive for the ball. And, I mean, it's hard to catch a diving pass. I mean, most NFL receivers aren't going to be able to make that catch. I mean, there are some receivers that can do that. I think Shepard's capable. But on a day like today where it was raining, as I said, tough to make that catch. I think if Eli placed that one over his right shoulder and threw it a little bit deeper, I think that's an easy touchdown and the Giants win the game. To have him dive and miss that catch and everyone on Twitter is like, oh, Sterling Shepard's got to catch that, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking to myself, like, that wasn't really that bad of a drop, you know, quote-unquote drop. I'm not really sure. You guys can comment what you think it was because I'm going to believe that it's more of Eli's fault rather than Shepard, and I want to go with that. So, if one of you can change my mind, that'd be awesome. But <laughs> I'd like to uh, like to see what most people think about that. Um, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much what I have for negatives right now. We do get um, Washington, I believe, next week, one o'clock game at Washington. I think that's a game they might win. Um, you know, at this point, you don't want your team to win when you have eight losses in week thirteen. But you know, I mean. <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore about winning games. I mean, whatever, fine, go win the game. Um, but yeah, I think the Redskins obviously don't have Alex Smith anymore. It's not like he was letting it up anyway. Now they have, um, I was going to say Colt McCoy. Is that the guy? I forget his name now. Maybe it's Colt McCoy. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I forget what the dude's name is. Uh, backup quarterback, good mobility, not the best passer. I, I think that's a team we can handle. Um, they beat us pretty badly at home, um, you know, four or five weeks ago. But that's a different team now, new quarterback. The Giants were, you know, I think a worse team back then than they are now. They have a lot of confidence, won a three out of four. And, um, yeah, I think they can win that game. So we'll see what happens. Um, but as I said before, I mean, you know, with, with what the other comments said about me putting more videos in here, I hope you guys enjoyed this more. Uh, if you guys have any other suggestions for what I should add in these videos, I'm definitely open to that. I mean, I want to make these as enjoyable as possible. I think it's awesome that, you know, I get like a couple thousand or three thousand people that listen to this uh, reaction every time. So I think that's that's great. And whatever you guys want me to do to make this even more entertaining, I'll definitely be open to it. So just leave your suggestions and I'll definitely, uh, you know, try to do that kind of stuff for you guys because, you know, it mainly comes down to the people that watch and, and not really what I do. So if my uh, my voice is too boring, at one or two in the morning when I record these if you want me to like spice it up a bit try and make this like more funny or put more like enthusiasm behind it I'm also open to that as well I mean it is hard at this hour but of course I'll try it um but yeah we get Washington then we get 
uh, Tennessee, then we get the Colts, and then we get the Cowboys. So only four games left, kind of shocking at this point. Seems like it went by very fast. Maybe they went out? I don't know. Doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, I'll talk to you guys next week.